Hi, I'm Hallie, and welcome to Project Strange. Lots of questions surround the structures in our world, such as who made them, how they made them, and why they made them. And Project Strange is our attempt to find these answers through understanding structural engineering. In this episode, we're trying to understand torsion. But first, let's talk about history. Though a mouse trap usually brings fear about mice, it actually features a fairly recent engineering invention called the torsion spring, which is in nearly every mouse trap on the market. These are the most powerful springs you can find, and it comes from their ability to create a snapping force. The inventor of this famous spring was named Charles Augustin de Coulomb. <laughs> Coulomb. De Coulomb. De Coulomb. But a mere six years later, John ah. Michel tweaked the invention by tightening it and allowing it to create that stronger force. Sorry, Charles. And sorry, mice. But the earliest example of a torsion spring was seen in medieval times through the invention of the catapult. The forward thrusting power that happened when the pulled back energy was released created a great wartime weapon for cannonballs, and maybe even for the great enemy of the medieval times, rats. And now it's time for the interview. Julian, what is torsion? Torsion refers to the twisting of an object due to an applied torque, and torque is the force that causes the object to twist. So this is unrelated, I'm just gonna do this real quick. Time for a magic intermission. So we have an empty cup and a coin, right? And so I put the cup here, I put the coin right here, and I'm gonna make the coin teleport through this cup by just hitting it. Ready? Three, two, one. Right here, look, it went through the cup. Look at that, okay, so now back to the portion. <laughs> this now ends our magic intermission. Torsion is measured in, in the angle of twist. Why the angle is because when you twist something, the um, object travels in a circular motion. Therefore, it's measured in angles. Okay, so torsion is affected by these other variables, such as length of the twisting body. For example, take this aluminum can here. Aluminum usually have a pretty high shear modulus, but in the shape of a can, which is hollow on the inside, it has a pretty low moment of inertia. So if I were to twist this can like this, it's very easy to twist. But if you take something like a cup and try to twist this cup, it's not possible because, you know, the material is very thick. Therefore, it has a higher twisting moment of inertia. How do you use torsion in everyday life? Okay, so to explain this, take a screwdriver, which you can find in everyday life. It's an everyday object. Now, normally it's used for this kind of motion, but sometimes you can also use it to twist, open a screw. I'm gonna walk over here. So we have the monitor here. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna huh? pull this for a second. Okay, so we, we take this. So we can twist open a monitor three different ways. One, first, using my hands, my fingers. Two, using this very average sized screwdriver. And three, this very uh, long screwdriver. Okay. Too long. Oh, it's too long, yes. First, if I use my hand to open this, you can see it's very hard. Like, like I have to exert a lot of force to uh, twist open the screw. But if I were to use like this pretty large screwdriver here, and, and then I put it in here and I twist it, you can see I'm, I'm exerting like, a lot less force to twist open this uh, screw. But if I use this very long screwdriver here, and then I barely have to use two fingers, and I just twist right open. So my hand is pretty much as the length of like just my fingers, versus this screwdriver, which is which adds this much length to it, versus this screwdriver, which adds all this length to it. And then that's how length affects the torsion. One other thing that affects torsion, <laughs> I forgot. No, I think, I think that's it actually. That's the three things, the four things that affects torsion. So the so the force you apply, the length of the twisting body the shear modulus, and the uh, moment of inertia. How do you use torsion in structural engineering? So I guess like in a steel bridge, you got steel girders running under it, and you have to design a steel girders for enough torsional resistance so it doesn't twist under an eccentric load. So say if the girders were to twist you know, over time with cars drive over it, it might fail and the bridge might collapse and everyone on the, on the bridge would die. And that's not good. That ain't good. Uh -huh. It's not good. No, it's pretty much it. It's torsion. It's, you're twisting something. Yeah! Good job. Thanks. Torsion. <laughs> so basically, the word torsion means the twisting of an object due to the applied torque, and it produces shear stresses inside the material. Torsion is the deformation of objects due to a pair of equal and opposite torques. The SI unit for torsion is Pascal, P-A, while torque is expressed in Newton meters, N-M. <laughs> Aside from weapons both small and large, you can see torque in everyday objects like turning a doorknob, fastening a bolt, or even turning your head from side to side in yoga. 
It's generated by a pair of forces, similar in magnitude and opposite in direction and parallel to each other. Basically, whenever movements are circular and there's a change in the angular momentum, torque occurs. Does your brain feel bigger after this? I know mine does. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to smash that like and subscribe button on your way out. And as always, enjoy the process. You're wait, saying... Wait, 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 wait. Huh? Where am I in there? What do you mean? Like, like where am I in the camera right now? I don't know. I hate just not that. This is on?